Denver was looking to grab something of a stranglehold in this series. Miami obviously was hoping to even things up at two games apiece. This was a low scoring affair early on. Jokic, no. Jokic, don't worry about that shot. It's not really the key here. The key is why is the big fella limping? Well, he rolls his ankle not all the way to the floor like Tatum did in that game seven loss to Miami, but he heads to the locker room in between quarters, icing it up. He'd be all right. Second quarter, both teams began to shoot much better. It's a 30 to 30 game. Nikola Jokic. And Denver grabs the lead. They had a chance to really drop the hammer and put this thing to bed, but Bam Adebayo gets the dunk, and Miami was able to really take advantage of Denver's inability to close Adebayo down the lane. He hammers that one home. He had a dozen in the first half, and Miami went into the locker room down just four when it appeared that Denver maybe could have put this thing in a place where they had a bit of breathing room. Into the third, it's a six-point game. Jokic bulls his way and hits the left hand. Pushes the lead to eight. Jamal Murray present, back to Jokic. All alone, give me all three of these, and the lead is nine. It's now a 10-point game. Jokic kind of floats one. Duncan Robinson gets the steal. Jokic should have been a foul trouble, so he lets him go. Michael Malone's on the floor, son of a gun. He's got an impassioned plea to his guys. Take his breath and calm down. We're playing like we're down 10. We're up eight. I just settled down. We're up eight, close the corner. He, they took that message to heart. Murray, Jokic, good find. Aaron Gordon was sensational. A career playoff high, 27. I told him the other night how I thought he was fluid. He said he liked that. His role in this game was to take and make big time shots. He buries that corner three. Jokic loving that as the lead swells to 13. Big moment here. 10 point game under 10 to go. Jokic and Adebayo are fighting for position. And Adebayo sells it. And Scott Foster's buying what's being sold. I'm not saying it's a flop. It wasn't. There was certainly contact. The foul was called. So now Jokic goes to the bench. Can the Heat take advantage? Jimmy Butler goes through the chest of Murray, hits, and that's three the hard way. It's a five-point game. Murray made a three right back on the other end, which was a big-time answer. Seven-point game. Eric Spolster talked about the quick hands on defense from Denver. You see him right there. That leads to a breakout. Gordon, Murray, Brown. Bruce Brown had a huge game in this one. Here he's probing the defense. He gets fouled and hits. Nine-point game. Brown again. This is just an incredible switch of hands from the left to the right to go up under Adebayo. Now on the road, Contavious Caldwell Pope. Denver 50% from three. They're 14 of 28. And now late 14 point game. Denver's going to win. Just a question of by how many. Brown sizing up Duncan Robinson. He buries that, and then he's got some he's got some choice words to say about what. Well, you know it. You know what it is. We won again. Basically, same score as Game Three. Michael Malone in the locker room after Denver is now one win away from their first ever NBA championship. When we got that plane coming down here, we're coming down to get two. We weren't satisfied with just one. And I thought DA just made a great point. One more, one more. You know, he just just win the four, uh, the first quarter. Let's take this one quarter at a time. Yeah. All right, go home, win the first quarter. Win the second quarter. Yeah. Win the third quarter. Yeah. One quarter at a time. Yeah. Right, playing Denver Nugget yeah. basketball, you've done all year. Yeah. Pacoa, a little disappointed you get a triple double tonight. <laughs> but great job, 23 and 12. Uh, I want to give this to Nikola Jokic. Yeah. 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 Great job. Really proud of you guys. We got a chance to do something special. Yeah. Haven't done it yet. Got a lot of work in front of us. We're going to home. We're going to take it one quarter at a time. Every play matters when you win a game in the finals on the road. You see the most playoff series ever before a first title. The old heads remember Denver, uh, the Detroit Pistons. Boston. They stood in the Pistons way. Then the Pistons stood in the Bulls way. That was back when you kind of had to graduate. It took a while, but they got there. The Cavaliers, you see, had 37. The Mavs, 32. 
Nuggets got 44 playoff series. They're trying to get their first ever title. You heard the message from Coach Malone to his guys. What's your exposed to preaching to the Heat on the other side? I told the guys, feel whatever you want to feel tonight. That's fine. You, you probably shouldn't sleep anything tonight, you know, any, any amount of time. I don't think anybody will. You know, we have an incredibly competitive group. We've done everything the hard way, and that's the way it's going to have to be done right now again. Uh, and all we're going to focus on is getting this thing back to the 305, get this thing back to Miami. Uh, and things can shift very quickly. It's going to be a gnarly game in Denver that's built for the competitors that we have in our locker room. And by the time we get on that plane, all we're thinking about is get this thing back to Miami. But I'm interested in, in, in uh, some conversation on Aaron Gordon. I love that he has an appetite to guard whoever the other, guy, other team's best guy is. Let me have him. And I also love that he's got the capability to score 27 when needed. To call him a role player, I think, would be slighting him because yes. he's more than that. Right? Yes. Dude averaged 16 a game in the regular season. But he's not Murray or Jokic. And so – how did he take this opportunity tonight with them saying someone else is going to have to beat him to say, I'll be that guy? As is always the case with you, I thought you summarized his impact perfectly the last game when you talked to him, and the word you used was fluid. There is no better word to describe Aaron Gordon. And, and it's, it's fluid as an impactful player because he can be what he was at the start of game one. Mm -hmm. We say, okay, you want to get all these switches and small guys on me? I will go beat these guys up in the post repeatedly. And that's how he got this series going for the Denver Nuggets. Other games... He might not get as many opportunities because of the way Miami's defending like the baseline and the back line. So then he'll make his contribution felt by getting up into Jimmy Butler and switching on a bam out of bio and doing a serviceable job. But how rare is it, Tim, to have the type of uh, personality where your appetite for, for yeah. shots is such that if I don't get them, I'm good with that. I would think that's difficult to do. Extremely. And there's a reason they targeted him specifically to join this group. He was the perfect addition when they picked up Aaron Gordon for that exact reason. Mm -hmm. He's a guy that put up big numbers on some nights in Orlando. Right? He, at nights, he had to be the guy in Orlando as their focal point of their offense. But now you look at what he's had to do since he got to Denver, he absolutely is going to take what's available to him on a given night and be satisfied to do that. Because when guys play like this, what they're telling you first and foremost – because they say it all the time. It's all about winning. This is actually backing it up. When you yeah. play the way that he does and accept that from night to night, your shot uh, chart and your field goal attempt line on that box score, it could look dramatically different depending on how things break for you in that game. But, Scott, I think if any game epitomized who this group is as a team, mm -hmm. it was this game. Your stars don't play great offensively but yeah. still very impactful. You always need that third guy to have a big night, whoever that may be. Tonight it was him. But then look at – you know, what you get from Bruce Brown tonight. Look at sure. Jamal Murray talked about that three Jeff Green hit. He took one shot. Yep. It was enormous, a corner three. KCP, the lead from six to nine, yeah. KCP, biggest defensive play of the game, a double strip on Jimmy Butler in the lane in a six-point game mm -hmm. that leads to a transition layup going the other way. So, and, and then, you know, we, we talked about what Christian Brown did in the last game. Yep. This is a team, and Jamal Murray was referencing that a lot in his, in his post-game sound. I, I was exactly smiling. I did, I did the Brian Gumbel thing when we were talking yep. about Gordon. I just wrote down teammate, and I feel like, yeah, I feel like what the Nuggets have are a bunch of great teammates and that's so do the heat look the heat got here because they got a great team and a great bunch of teammates I just don't know how they go to Miami at this stage I keep talking about the gas tank I don't know where it's at I'm, and I refuse to bury him I just don't know what they do Spoh's talking about we're going to make it hard we always make it hard what do they have to do to make it a six game series yeah, I, mean, I think Denver's going to take care of business on Monday night yeah. and the difference is I think their best player is a guy that just cannot be derailed in any way. You're not going to limit Nikola Jokic to the extent that he has an off night and it actually affects their team's ability to win because he does too many things in too many ways right. to beat you, whatever that answer has to be. And, and that's the differentiating factor between the two teams. So I think they, they end it on Monday night. Um, and this has just been an incredibly impressive, impressive run by this team. And they just they look so confident right now. They look pretty certain of themselves. He goes for 23 and a dozen. And you go, ah, it, was, yeah, it was a quiet night. You know what I mean? Yeah. That, to me, that, that frames what Jokic is doing. It's just, he's on a level that's just preposterous. I loved his word he used was trust. These guys have great love for each other, and it's, it's because of the selflessness of their best player and the way he just goes about his business. 
without really caring about any of the limelight. He just wants to get it done for his guys. I know one person that talks about the NBA on television a lot that was talking about Denver back in January was this guy. <laughs> Literally, like you were, you were the only one. And they're, they're one win away from a parade, the first ever in Denver. You will be with us on Monday to talk I will. about it. See you then. I look forward to that very much. You went from being the kid who didn't love college basketball mm -hmm. because he couldn't jump that high or run that fast to becoming probably the best player on the planet. Reflecting on your journey, can you oh. explain to us what it took? <laughs> yes, I what think, it took. I think we don't have a time what for that. What made it but, all possible uh, uh, besides your natural talent? Yes, I mean, uh, I know. I'm, I'm just happy that we every year we we grown as a team uh, and uh, every every year uh, we were getting better and now in this, now we are in this situation and uh, you know we we will we will stick the we we'll stick to the guys that we had we draft or whatever and of course we had some add uh, we had some uh, uh, really good players that um, that accept our culture or our style of play and uh, I think that's why we are in this situation. I mean, my journey is, uh, I don't know. And I don't think it's that interesting. Ohm right here. Nicola, Ohm Young, ESPN. You, I think the other day you mentioned about Jamal maturing. Um, so much attention on his scoring, but when you go out with five fouls, what did you see him and how he controlled the game? Michael Malone said that he just trusted his teammates and he didn't try to play a hero or try to make something happen because all the double teams were coming. Yes, of course. I mean, that's. I think that's... Uh, that's where you see the 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 growth and, and like you say maturity in, in his game. Um, I think he was amazing today. Yes, of course he was shooting five for seventeen. Of course, you know some nights you miss, some nights you you uh, you you you, you uh, make. But global globally, he's our leader, and we are following him. In the front left. Tomer's are from Clutch Points. Nicole, I, I know you don't like ask, entering about the stats too much, but if you will, you're the fourth player in NBA Finals history to record the line that you had today, joining like LeBron, uh, KD, and Tim Duncan. Uh, what, do, what do you think about when you hear that? It's not a big 23, 12, and 4. Fourth ever, the 23, 10, and 4. Oh. I mean, I don't know. Uh, nice. It's good. Uh, I mean, I don't really don't know, don't know what to say. Mark Stalwart, Miami Times. Uh, Jimmy, you play for Larry O'Brien. Uh, knowing from here on out that the trophy will be in the building, what's the mentality on Monday night? Uh, same thing it's always been. It's a game at a time. Now we're in a must-win situation every single game, which we're capable of. Um, some correctable things that we got to do, but um, it's not impossible. So we got we got to go out there and do it. We got three to get. We're gonna go to the right side first row. Cooper Moorhead, Heat.com. Kyle, they had 19 makes in the restricted area and 13 cuts. So even though Jokic and Murray didn't have the most efficient nights, what were they doing to get behind the defense? Uh, I think we were up a little higher, you know, trying to make sure that uh, we showed bodies on there coming off the pick and roll. Um, a couple of their cuts were kind of, you know, just random and kind of just landed in their lap. But, um, you know, I think we just got to find a way to kind of keep the ball in front of us. And, you know, it happened tonight. They got, they got good cuts tonight. We're going to go on the far right side and back row. Jimmy, Nick Friedel, ESPN. What is the biggest message you want to impart to the team over the course of the next couple of days heading into Monday? Um, no doubt. Um, we don't have any of that. We don't have no quit. We're going to continually fight starting tomorrow to get better. And then we're going to go on to Monday and, and do what we said we were going to do this entire time and win. We have to. Um, we have no other choice. Otherwise, we did all this for no reason. So. The guys know, we know, um, we got something to do. If you could paint for us the picture of that Nugget locker room, because to a man, they have been confident, they've been calm, they've been poised, but one thing they refuse to do is act like they've won anything yet. Is that the sense that you have? Absolutely, Scott. I actually just came from the Nuggets locker room, and it's interesting because you can feel that they are 
fighting this tightrope. They're walking this tightrope of feeling like they're right there. They can taste it, but they also know that Michael Malone has preached this entire postseason. We haven't won anything yet, and that was the message, really, that they were, were dealing with here. When I walked into the locker room, first there was a coach walking out, and he said, man, that felt so sweet. But the minute that you walked into the locker room, you heard Jamal Murray. He looked me in the eye, and he said, one effing more. This is a feeling that is prevalent around this Nuggets locker room. They're excited. They can taste it. They know how good they are at home, and yet they are fighting against this feeling that they just don't want to celebrate before the moment is there. Michael Malone told me before game, or right after game three, rather, that they felt like they came here not to win one game, but rather to win two games, and they hadn't done that yet. Now they've completed that mission, Scott. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.